Hello guys and gals. Boy, it's hot out here today. Happy Father's Day to you guys. This is actually being filmed on Father's Day 2018. So happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. What we're gonna look at today is using the shim kit that comes with your TriStar Viper G2. Now it's basically the same as any other shim kit. I've got a few of my other shotguns here on the table. This uh, Beretta 390 was the first shotgun that I ever used my shim kit with. Uh, shimmed this one back in 2004 to fit me and ever since then i've been a true believer in using your shim kits now you can shoot a shotgun just fine without shimming it if it doesn't fit you you can you can wrestle your face around until you get on it and shoot it but the whole point is to do that as naturally as possible and a shim kit allows you to semi customize your fit of your shotgun so that you're just naturally when you, when you mount your shotgun, everything just naturally lines up. You don't have to fight it and look around for it. So that's the whole point of using the shims. Now, the reason I'm doing it about the TriStar, the Viper G2 series, because I just picked up this little 410. This is a, it's brand new from TriStar. Uh, the Viper G2's been around for a while, but the 410 offering is brand new. It's just hitting dealer shells. I just picked this one up from my FFL Friday and before I start shooting it and get a video review out on this shotgun, I wanna go ahead and shim it. Now, of course, I'll link back to this video in that review, but I can't do a proper review on it if the shotgun doesn't fit me properly. And I can tell you from past experience that I can shoot it fine the way it is, but I have to, and there's no one behind this camera, there's nothing back there but an open field, gun is empty. But if I shoot, if I bring this gun up, I can see a lot of rib right here. That tells me that I'm gonna shoot high. That's my natural mount. And you wanna be consistent with your mount. If you're not consistent with your mount, you know, there's no use in messing with your shins until you get a good consistent mount down. I'll explain that a little more when we shoot here in a second. But you can check, once you got your mount down, you can check if you see rib, you need to lower the rear of your stock. You need to add some drop. If you can't even see the bead, if all you can see is receiver, then you need to raise your stock. And if you've got a thin face, you know, a, a small facial structure, you may not need to change anything. Or you may need to raise it. With me, I've got a head like a five-gallon bucket. So I need to drop this thing, and I need some cast-off. Cast-off means I'm, I'm turning the stock out this way just a little bit. If you were left hand, you would use cast on and you would turn the stock out this way a little bit. But since I shoot right handed, I need to push this away from my face a little bit because I've got such a large facial structure. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, for example, I like, I like about two and a half inches of drop and I like some cast off. And we can get that with this shim kit. This is my Beretta. 390 you might not be able to tell from that distance but parallel with the the rib of the barrel I like about two and a half inches of drop and that's what I've got right there that that's what works out for me you if, if you've never shimmed your shotguns before you may have to experiment and try some different shims and see what ends up working out for you the cast off if you you probably can't see that, but if I run this yardstick parallel with the rib, my stock is gonna be kicked out that way just a little bit away from my face. Okay, so I've got a large cardboard target here. You want a large target? You wanna use the tightest choke that you have. The TriStar Vipers come with a uh, set of chokes, so put your full choke in for this test. You wanna have a two inch about a two inch target that you're using for your point of aim or your focal focus point. This uh, box stamp certification stamp happens to be exactly two inches. So I'm not gonna fool putting a target on here. I'm just gonna use this as my focal point. We'll see where my pattern ends up. Okay, so I've got my full choke in. I am 16 yards from the target. 
and I'm gonna, my focal point is gonna be on that little dot, not the side of my gun. Um, I just want this to be natural and where it hits is where it hits and then we'll try to adjust it with the shims. So as soon as I mount the shotgun, so as soon as the shotgun hits my cheek, I'm gonna fire regardless of where the bead is. All right, so there's three shots. Let me go load up. We'll hit it three more times. Okay, I'm loaded up again. Let's hit it three more times. Actually, the more you shoot, the better, because you'll get a better uh, average of where your actual, where you're mounting and where your pattern is hitting. Let's go three more shots. <laughs> okay, so ideally, you just keep doing this until you pretty much form a hole in the cardboard, and that's where you're being consistent at. So I think, I think we've done it enough. We'll go up here and take a look, and then we'll make our adjustments. All right, so as you can see, I've tried my best to draw a circle around the majority of my pattern here. Uh, not a very good drawer, of course, not even near a circle, but you get the idea. As you can see, most of my pattern is hitting high. That tells me that I need a little more drop on my stock to bring that pattern down. Now, some people like, you know, if you're shooting trap or something like that, or you're shooting targets that rise, you know, some people like to have their pattern shoot a little high, so you may pattern your shotgun and be happy with that. For me, I like about a 60-40, about 60% high, 40% low. As you can see, we've hardly got any low, so we're at a very small percent low. We're at about a 90% high right now, or, or even more. So we, I want to bring that down, and I can do that with my shim kit. Now, as far as left to right, I'm pretty well on. I don't necessarily have to add any cast or take away any cast. But I'm still going to put the cast off shim on and give it a try just because that's the way my other three shotguns are set up. I just want to want to see how that patterns and if it does throw my if it does throw my pattern left or right, I can always take it out. But I'm going to put some cast off and I'm going to lower this pattern by adding drop. So let's go do that. All right, so I'm going to install my shims. This is going to be specifically to the TriStar Viper G2. Now, the other shotguns are similar, you know, the same principle in dropping the stock and adding cast or taking away cast, but this is TriStar specific. So if you've got another brand of shotgun, be sure and look up their instructions. Now we'll start with a Phillips screwdriver, preferably about a number two. We want to remove our butt plate. That's actually a fairly nice little recoil pad. Uh, of course, 410 doesn't generate much recoil, but still nice to have that on there. And I should have mentioned before I started, always make sure you're clear, unloaded, none in the magazine, none in the chamber. Before you work on any shotgun, always, or any gun for that matter, always make sure it's clear. So now we've got the, the butt pad off, the recoil pad, and you'll notice a a bolt that holds the stock on. This one is slotted for a large flathead screwdriver, but it's also a hex head for a 13 millimeter socket. And I prefer to use the socket over the screwdriver. This can be tough to break loose. It's better to have two people need somebody to help. Uh, it's easier to have somebody to help hold it. I'm gonna try it here. That booger's on there tight. Ah. Oh, 
All right, comes off just like that. There's your bolt. There's your stock. And this wood, check this wood out. This wood they're using on these Turkish made shotguns is a Turkish walnut, European walnut. Just beautiful. These Tri-Stars, the quality seems to go up all the time. They're getting better and better at what they do. Maybe if I got my face out of there, it would focus. Really nice wood. I like that. Okay, so we've got our shim kit here. I want to use, it comes with a 55, a 50, a 55, and a 65, in addition to the spacer that's on the receiver when you get it, which is just marked SSP. Not sure what the SSP stands for right off the top of my head. But I'm gonna add my cast. I want it to be cast off, so I want the thick side on the side that my face is gonna be on. That's gonna turn that stock out away from my face. Like I said, by my pattern, not necessary that I do that, but it, this way it's gonna feel like all of my other shotguns. And I prefer about two and a half inches of drop and the one mark 65, that's in millimeters, that's gonna give me close to my two and a half inches of drop. So I've got my cast off and I've got my drop on. Now it's as simple as putting the stock and butt plate back on. I just give it a good snugging. You don't have to get carried away here. Uh, the old German torque, good and tight, will be plenty. It's a recoil uh, pad or butt plate, whatever you want to call it, back on. And that's all there is to it. So. I can already tell the difference. So let's go back over to our patterning board and shoot a few more rounds on it and see if it brings our pattern down. Okay, I've only got four rounds left, but we'll go ahead and shoot those four and it, that should be enough to tell us if my pattern's dropped or not. Again, you just want to fire as soon as the as soon as the stock hits your cheek. You're not trying to cheat the system here and look and hunt for that uh, bead. Okay guys, so after I shot those four rounds, I saw how sparse the pattern looked on there compared to what we had shot before. I think we had put nine rounds on it before the adjustment. So I went to the truck, scrounged around, found another box of 410 shells, and went ahead and finished patterning. I went ahead and put nine rounds after the adjustment. So we've got an even amount of pellets scattered over the board after we made our adjustment and before we made our adjustment. Um, I, I actually meant to record the actual shooting, but evidently I didn't hit the record button. So let's go take a look and see what we've done here. Okay. I don't know how well you can see that. But I've drawn another circle here that shows the center of my pattern now after the adjustments. And it's pretty much exactly where I like for my patterns to be. A little bit denser up high than it is down low. But you can see even some of the wads were hitting right in the center. So the, the little plastic wads that hold the shot were actually hitting the target right there. Now I did have one that went kind of low. And that's because I pulled the trigger before I had my mount uh, fully mounted. So that was my fault that I pulled that low one. 
and you'll have that. That's why I say the more you shoot, the better, the more consistent your results are going to be. So that's how you, how you adjust your shims to fit you, and that's how you test to see if it actually worked and if it actually does fit you now or not. Okay, so that's pretty much all I've got today. And today we worked, of course, with the TriStar G2, the Viper G2. Now, the, the same principle is going to work for any shotgun, Beretta, Benelli, whatever you're working with. But just follow their instructions because their shims are going to be a little bit different. And if you get shims flipped around, uh, binding against yourself, uh, some of them use a two-shim system. If you bind them against yourself, you can actually damage your stock. So just follow the manufacturer's instructions. That's really all I got to talk about this morning. So hope you guys have a great day. As usual, all the links to my other social media accounts are in the description of this video. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And I'll talk with you guys again soon.